So hello everyone, I'm Dr. Noemi Puch and I work uh, in the um, hematology department of the um, University Hospital of Salamanca in Spain as part of the myeloma team. And on behalf of the myeloma Spanish group, I'm going to present uh, the results that we have just uh, presented at LASH as meeting regarding the clinical impact of next generation flow versus quantitative immune precipitation mass spectrometry to assess minimal residual disease in newly diagnosed multiple myeloma patients receiving maintenance in the GEM 2014 um, trial. So uh, in the context of the GEM 2014 main trial, which is a phase three multi-center open label randomized trial exploring the role of maintenance treatment in patients in newly diagnosed patients with myeloma. So we have assessed uh, the, uh, the results and the clinical value of uh, MAD evaluation uh, using um, next generation flow in the bone marrow and using quantitative immune precipitation mass spectrometry in peripheral blood in serum samples. And we have done these comparisons uh, at the beginning of the maintenance trial and then uh, two years afterwards. So, um, so, at the, at, at the time point of um, two years of treatment. So here uh, you can see the ability of the three methods to, de to detect the presence of residual disease. So NGF was able to identify the presence of clonal plasma cells in 29% of patients. Quantitative immune precipitation mass spectrometry identified the presence of the monoclonal protein in 24% of cases and immune fixation in 11% of them. So then, uh, so we confirmed uh, the clinical value of the identification of residual disease using next generation flow and mass spectrometry. You can see here the results in terms of progression-free survival. And most importantly, we found out that the results of immune fixation, that is the results of the standard methods that we are that we are currently using um, to evaluate uh, disease response in patients with myeloma. At this time point, that is um, two years after the initiation of the maintenance treatment, was not able to differentiate two groups of patients with different progression-free survival. So then we compare the results of both methods, that is of quantitative immune precipitation mass spectrometry and NGF, at um, again, at two years after the starting of maintenance, you can see here that the overall concordance between both methods was very high, 85%. And there were um, discordances um, in both, um, both uh, sites, I would say. So there were 5% uh, of patients um, that were NGF negative mass spectrometry positive, and there were 10% of patients that were NGF positive mass spectrometry negative. And these results translated into a positive predictive value of 78% and a negative predictive value of 87% of mass spectrometry taking and the results of, an, of next generation flow as a reference. Important to highlight that, uh, so five out of these eight patients found to be uh, NGF negative mass spectrometry positive, had plasma cytomas at diagnosis. And also important to say that, um, that um, uh, six, uh, eight of, out of these 16 patients found to be NGF positive mass spectrometry negative were actually light chain multiple myeloma. And we did not include the analysis of the free light chains in this study. So then uh, what we did was to analyze the progression-free survival of the patients according to the combined results of both methods. You can see the results here. And we also learned that the two comparisons reaching a statistical significance in these um, uh, kaplan meier curves were the one uh, comparing uh, double positive and double negative uh, cases, which is the logical one, as well as this one that is shown uh, now in the slide, uh, and that was the comparison between uh, double negative cases and those NGF positive mass spectrometry. Um, sorry. And those, um, so between double negative cases and those uh, NGF positive mass spectrometry negative cases. So just let me repeat uh, so these, these couple of slides. So, so what we did was to, um, so next, what we did was to compare the progression-free survival according to the combined results of both methods. The results are shown in the slide, and we found that the two comparisons reaching a statistical significance in this regard 
were first the one shown now in the slide. Uh, that is the comparison between double negative cases and double positive cases, which is the logical one, and that is represented in the black and blue curves. And also we found that the comparison between double negative cases and that one uh, of patients found to be NGF positive mass spectrometry negative and represented in orange was also found to be a statistical significance. So, um, so we ask ourselves uh, if at this point the results of uh, quantitative immune precipitation mass spectrometry and next generation flow were complementary. And according to the results uh, that you can see in the slide, um, so the answer was no, because if you um, if you look at the upper part um, of these Kaplan-Meier curves, where actually there are three different curves because there, there is one uh, represented in light gray, which is just below the the black one. So you can see here that these uh, three groups of patients have a, uh, um, uh, an almost superimposable progression free survival. And actually, these patients corresponded to, um, to double negative double negative cases, that is um, the, the patients represented in, in black, and then the curve represented in light gray, which is just below this one, represented patients NGF negative regardless of the results of the alternative method. And here in the curve represented in, um, in dark gray, you have patients found to be mass spectrometry negative regardless of, re of the results of NGF, meaning, as I said, that at this point, and using these two methods, so the results of both techniques do not seem to have a complementary value. So then what we did was to uh, assess progression-free survival from, from enrollment according to the results of uh, next generation flow and mass spectrometry. Next generation flow assessed in bone marrow and mass spectrometry in peripheral blood. You can see here that both methods showed um, a prognostic value in terms of progression-free survival in terms of progression-free survival. And then we assessed the value of a sustained MRD negativity, again, using these both methods. Uh, and uh, so you can see um, on the right side of your screen and the results of, um, of this assessment using next generation flow. And you can see in the upper part of the Kaplan-Meier curve, those patients reaching uh, sustained MRD negativity or converting from MRD positive to MRD negative. And these patients, as you can see, had a, a significantly better progression free survival as compared to those patients with persistent MRD or converting from MRD negative to MRD positive. And similar results were obtained when the, the, the presence of disease was assessed using quantitative immune precipitation mass spectrometry. Again, in the upper part of the curve, you can see those patients with sustained MRD negativity or converting from positive to negative at year number two using a mass spectrometry. And again, in the lower part of the, of the, of the Kaplan-Meier curve, those patients with persistent MRD or converting from negative to positive. And finally, what we did was to uh, confirm the added clinical value of achieving sustained MRD negativity as expected, I would say. And here you have the results um, uh, when MRD was assessed using next generation flow. Um, so uh, MRD negative just at a single time point and sustained MRD negativity and similar results when, uh, uh, when the presence of residual disease was assessed using uh, mass spectrometry here at a single time point here um, in patients uh, reaching sustained MRD negativity. So in conclusion, so from our study, we can um, so we can say that um, so in patients with myeloma receiving maintenance standard response criteria do not seem to discriminate two groups of patients with different outcome. And uh, so we have we have seen that the identification and kinetics of MRD by next generation flow and quantitative immune precipitation mass spectrometry are both associated with a comparable clinical value in terms of progression free survival and also so taking next generation flow as a reference, so the high negative predictive value of mass spectrometry supports its application as a guide for bone marrow aspiration biopsy and its use alongside standard methods for developing MRD adapted treatment approaches. And uh, so when so when uh, we try to apply these results to the um, routine um, 
uh, management of our patients in the clinic. So I would say that the application of mass spectrometry for the follow-up of our patients, so it's, uh, so it's going to um, allow us to um, to skip uh, or to avoid uh, some um, bone marrow aspirations because the technique is more sensitive as compared to the methods that we are currently using uh, right now. And also because um, so its use is gonna help us to decide the, the best moment to, um, to ask for a bone marrow aspiration in our patients. So, um, so it's gonna be um, an, an important tool for the management of our patients in the future. And also, um, so for the same reason, because it seems to be more uh, sensitive as compared to the standard methods, and also because it's performed in peripheral blood, and therefore we can, um, we can uh, do it um, more frequently as compared to the, to the bone marrow um, examinations. So we are going to be able in the future, these results do not support what I'm going to say, but um, um, I, I, I believe that this, this is going to be uh, the case. So in the future, we are going to be able to um, detect the, um, the, the presence of disease, the, the, the relapse of the disease earlier as compared to the methods that, that we are using right now, and probably to intervene um, earlier uh, to, uh, to control the disease um, fa faster or earlier as compared to our current management.